y'all. He is gonna light this stage on fire. I'm excited because I get to go take a pee break, all right? So put y'all hands together for none other than Brian Tidwell. What's up, this is your boy Brian Tidwell, AKA B Titty, and you are watching Anatomy of a Joke. I hate my fucking job. Like, I really work out. <laughs> Anybody here, like, really hate their job? Make some noise. Yeah. Yeah. The bartender claps. You're like, I hate this, my like, I can't. <laughs> this is how you know when you hate your job. When you get mad at shit that's supposed to happen. <laughs> like, every time a customer walk in, I get pissed. Like, why do they keep ordering food, man? <laughs> yeah, at home. All right, cool. So this first joke I'm gonna get into, uh, actually one of my favorite jokes, is actually the first joke I ever wrote. Um, it's about my experience at McDonald's. A lot of y'all probably do know this by now. I worked at McDonald's, I got about maybe 10, 12 years experience working at McDonald's, right? People always come at McDonald's and y'all do stuff just to mess with their employees on purpose. Like I remember I was at work, looking through the drive through window, this lady got out the car with an attitude, keep the door open, boom! I ran to the back like, not today. <laughs> She's like, who making fries? They pointed me out. Me? I said, what's wrong? She said, every time I come in here, you mess my order up. I said, why you keep coming in? She said, what you say? I said, huh? <laughs> Working at fast food, we hate it. Uh, the only thing we hate is the customers. We actually hate doing our job. So one of the things that makes uh, fast food workers mad is when we about to close and then a whole bunch of people come in. All right, so I remember this one particular night we was about to get off. We had everything shut down. We were like, man, it's been a slow night. About to shut down. And I think they had like a concert or something downtown. And out of nowhere, this rush come in. Boom, we like, fuck, we got 20 minutes left. We about to leave. So we got to turn the grills back on. We got to turn all the vats back on. You know, they ordering all this food. We got attitudes. We pissed, we mad. We like, man, fuck, you know. And then I remember saying to myself like, man, fuck, why they keep ordering food, man? And then, like, this was before my comedy days, too, when I had said this to myself. And I was thinking to myself, like, damn, if they don't order food, I won't have a fucking job. And then I realized, like, when you had a job you hate, you get mad at the shit that's supposed to happen, the shit that get, keep you employed. So I wrote that down. That was, like, one of the first jokes I had wrote, um, just, just about hating doing what I was supposed to do. By a round of applause, how many of y'all in here ever heard that saying, no homo? Anybody in here heard that? <laughs> I figured all the black people would clap. All right, so listen, a man says no homo before or after he says something that sounds gay. You follow me? Yeah. All right, he say no homo before it, mm -hmm. and if he say something that sounds gay, he'll say no homo after it, right? Now my buddy, he don't always say it, but when he do, it's followed by the gayest shit you can ever say. <laughs> I'm getting ready for the show, I come out, I'm asking my people how I look, my homegirl's like, oh, you look cool, put that on. My one dude was like, yeah, B, where that? Here he go. Hey, no homo, B. <laughs> but them pants make your dick look big. <laughs> I looked him dead in his face. I said, hi, big. <laughs> I need to know. I want Now, this joke is line for line the truth. I got a buddy. Uh, this dude is cool, he get girls, but he always say the gayest thing you could think of, right? And he used to, like, I remember, <laughs> I remember one time he told this one dude, like, man, damn, man, those smiles just brighten up a room. I'm like, man, so he say shit like that, right? So I remember this one particular time, uh, we was in school and we getting ready to go out, go to a party or something. And I'm getting dressed, right? And this is back when people used to wear the big baggy jeans. So I used to wear the baggy jeans and I had the belt, like the belt that was too small for the jeans. So when you when you tie it, it kind of pop out and shit like all inside. So uh, I got these jeans on. So I'm asking people, you know how I look? I look cool. You know, my boy's like, yeah, you know, nigga. We like, we don't care, man. Yeah, go ahead, put that on, let's go, right? He, my dude come out like, he like, man, shit. I don't think you need to wear them jeans, man. They, they make your dick look big. Like, and we just all like, they was playing a game like, what? He's like, no, just look though. It, it just looked big. Like, he looked like, he didn't wear it. I'm like, what is you, like, what is you talking about, dude? And it was just so, uh, it was so awkward. And he like, no homo, y'all know I get bitches. I fuck you, he like, 
nah, I can't let you slide with that, man. I didn't even wear the jeans, you know, because I felt uncomfortable. You know, maybe I should have worn them because I probably got some, some action that night. But yeah, man, like that was a true story, man. They told me my dick looked big. Get to the hotel. I'm nervous. I'm looking for the dude that parked cars, right? Some random dude just walk up, right? He didn't even have a uniform on. He had a t-shirt with a uh, valet working on the shirt. I'm like, hey man, you parking the car? She like, can't you read my shirt? It's saved a let. I was like, okay. <laughs> I gave him the keys. I was like, all right, bro, I give him the keys. I go upstairs. I'm practicing in the hotel. Mind y'all, I had a roommate already at the hotel. I don't know why, but oh, I'm practicing. Oh, True story, man, janky promoter. I'm practicing. When I go out, I'm nervous in different places. So I don't really like driving because at first I can't see and then I just don't know where I'm going. So I call the Uber, right? Call the Uber, the Uber driver pull up and it was the same dude that was doing valet at the hotel oh. in my car, I'm talking about where you going? I... So this last joke, um, this is actually like one of the most uh, recent jokes I wrote. Um, like this joke actually came to me. I was doing a show in Detroit, all right? We know Detroit. Detroit is just as raggedy as Cleveland, right? If not more. So I'm going to do this show in Detroit and um, put up to the hotel. I pull up to the hotel and I don't know if it's just me because I'm the type of person I've never been nowhere, but I went to put up to this hotel and the dude tell me we only do valet parking. And I'm like, what? He's like, we only do valet parking. And the dude was kind of sketched out like the dude wasn't even in his full uniform. Like he had, like he just looked weird. I'm like, man, I don't even know if this dude work here. But he like, yeah, we only do valet. I'm like, all right, bro, cool. I get this dude the keys to to the thing, and I go upstairs. You know, I'm practicing for the show, man. I got an attitude because I'm like, man, they only do valet. I'm like, that dude probably hustling. He like, and then I start thinking to myself, I'm like, what if he really hustling? Like, what if he going to do other errands in my car? Like, he don't even work for there. Like, I'm like, what if he doing Uber? And then I started thinking about that. And then I, I swear to God, I sat, up, I sat on the couch and I made this video and I was just like, man, I'm fucking hate Detroit. I'm done with Detroit. Y'all hustled me. I, I I did the, um I gave the dude um, downstairs my car for valet. I go downstairs. I'm about to come to the show. I'm about to be late. Cause as soon as I come to my show, they can't find my car. So I'll order an Uber and the dude that's doing valet at the hotel pull up in my car. And this is the commercial I had made for him. And I posted it, and then like the dudes from Detroit posted it, started getting a whole bunch of hits and stuff like that. And I started to, I was scared to do that joke that night at the show, but then I ended up doing it when I came back to Cleveland, and then it hit, and I was just like, damn, that's funny. But I, I you know, I started developing, developing the joke down the line though. But that's how I came up with that joke. So that's my time, man. Brian said, well, make sure y'all show that energy for just these live it up. This is your boy Brian Tipwell, aka B Titty, and that was Anatomy of a Joke. <laughs>